Welcome back to Getting Started with Apache Solar Search. This is Robert Elwell, and this is Section 6, Figuring Solar. In this section, we will discuss the functionality of request handlers in solar, the purpose and location of default request handlers in the config file, and how to add and modify request handlers. Now that we have an understanding of how to work with the schema.xml, another important configuration component to Solar is the config.xml. We can find this by going to the Solar admin and navigating to the config tab. We can also access this from within the folder that you have solar installed, the example solar comp. So I'm there now, and we can look at the schema or the config file this way. So if we're just browsing, it's probably a good idea just to take a look in the web browser. Here we'll go through and understand exactly what the config file controls. So as you can see, it's an XML file with a root node for config. Everything else in here is obviously configuration directives. So we have abort on configuration, which will tell us whether or not we should stop loading if we run into a configuration error when trying to start the solar instance. We have a declaration of what version we're on. And now we have declarations to include different jar files. This basically allows us to invoke particular classes and request handlers that come with the Solar and Lucene libraries. For instance, there are a few analyzers in Polish, and thanks to that extent that you actually need to explicitly require in this area before you can start using them. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. There's also cases where not located directory will be ignored. So again, uh, you can add something in and if you include a typo, you might not even notice it because it's not going to break or complain. You can specify a data directory that will hold the index data this is nice because you might be able to put it on a different partition that's mounted. You may be able to just put it somewhere outside of your actual solar install so that you can more easily deploy things. There's a lot of advantages to being able to specify a data directory. Um, by default, it's in the solar home data folder, which is part of the solar install directory structure. So moving on, the index config is a major part of what we'll be discussing for this video. The index config basically controls a lot of the behavior around indexing and memory management involved therein. So it's very important to keep in mind that you don't necessarily need to mess with these unless you suspect that something that you're working on is presenting a problem with respect to these parameters. The first thing that you need to be able to understand in order to better leverage these fields, however, is that they exist and that these parameters can be tweaked. So let's uh, take a look and have an idea of what we're really working with for the index configuration. Uh, first off, max field length. This is the maximum number of tokens, so not the maximum number of characters, but the maximum number of, say, words counted as many times as they show up in a text document, for instance. A text field, that is. The maximum time to wait for a write lock. That's basically something keeping us from competing with resources when trying to write to the index. RAM buffer and buffer docs 
is specifically associated with handling how we're indexing when, uh, when we're adding documents and the sort of memory management. These are the kinds of numbers where moving up in one direction will increase speed and moving up in another direction will sort of increase size and might increase your RAM requirements as well. Merge policy is another thing to make sure you have a basic understanding of, and that's basically the approaches that the solar instance takes to bring together multiple disparate files within your index into a more compressed index. This is more of that fun sort of uh, sparse matrix compression stuff. So, again, merge factor is is another component of that. We're going to have possibly a lot of segmented files, and we want to decide how many is so many that we actually need to turn it into one file. This is an expensive maneuver, and that's why, you know, sometimes it's okay to have a lot of different files, and then sometimes we start running into situations where too many files will actually cause more performance and memory management problems than just finally compressing it, regardless of how expensive that can be. The merge scheduler is another component that sort of has a play in this, in this whole uh, dance of the segment files with the main index file. And this is uh, another thing where if you're having issues with scheduling merges, that you may want to consider reconfiguring this to possibly a different class, such as the serial merge schedule. So moving right along, we have some options for locking. So, you know, different file control, basically, depending on what your needs are whether you want your index to maybe not be written to at a certain time or anything like that. We also have options for deletion policy. So, you know, the uh, amount of commits we may want to delete if, you know, we're, we're deleting at a given point, at a given age, that is. So here's another one, max commit age. You know, we can say, hey, if something is that old, then delete it. And then finally, we have this info stream value, which will allow us to write debugging info to a particular log. Uh, here, by default, it's info stream.txt. And these are debugging info from the Lucene Index Rider, so to let you know what's going on while things are being indexed. So that much is the index config. Uh, now we understand that there are a number of different attributes to indexing that we can control, such as memory management, file merging, and also um, I.O. locking. Next we'll start to look at request handlers.